Hello out there to all of my fellow gold diggers. This is your girl, Rita, also known as the self-proclaimed gold digger. Welcome to my channel where I discuss my life as a wife, mom, entrepreneur, and business owner, all while trying to crush and achieve my goals. My current goal and my current focus is becoming debt-free and achieving financial independence. So I will be sharing with you money-saving tips, financial advice, and just things that I am learning along my journey so if this is something you're interested in please be sure to subscribe to my channel now today's topic is money myths that i am debunking okay these are things that we may have grown up with things that we may have been told things that we may have believed about money and then later on you found out hey that is not the case this is not even true um so i'm going to be sharing that with you today now before i get into that i wanted to let you guys know that your girl has started a new instagram account so please be sure to follow me on ig at gold digger chick that's where you can find me and you'll get more regular updates and things from me on that account. So once again, it's Gold Digger Chick, G-O-A-L, and then Digger Chick, okay? So be sure to follow me. Let me know if you're following me and you saw the YouTube video and everything like that so I can say, hey girl, hey, um, or just give you a what's up. All right, thanks so much. All right, so let's get into the money myths. I have six money myths that I am going to be debunking and talking about today, okay? So here we go. All right, our first money myth is I was told growing up that credit cards are bad. I was told don't get a credit card, credit cards are bad, please, you know, stay away from credit cards. And I am debunking that myth that no, credit cards are not necessarily bad, okay? In and of themselves, credit cards are not bad, but they can be bad if they are not used correctly or used responsibly. It's kind of like when you were growing up and they were like, um, don't have sex, sex is bad and stuff like that. You gotta wait to have, you know, have sex once you get married because it's bad if you do it beforehand or whatever. And then you grow up and you find out, <sighs> Sex isn't bad, but you know, you got to do it under the right parameters, so to speak. So same thing with credit cards. You have to do it under the right parameters. Yes, if you have a bad financial background, if you have um, bad financial foundation and you're trying to use a credit card, yes, that can be bad. If you are trying to use a credit card as an emergency fund, yes, that can be bad. So I find that we were not giving the fundamental or the foundational stuff in regards to how credit cards work, um, how you're supposed to use them. We've just been given this blanket message like, hey, credit cards are bad. Like they told us, like, don't have sex, sex is bad or whatever. It's like this blanket message and no one is going into the details of why they are saying that or they are using their own experience where they might have been terrible with credit cards and racked up debt and got into all this trouble and now they're saying credit cards are bad. No, credit cards are not bad. Like they say, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Like credit cards are not bad. The people who use them may not be using them in the most responsible way, okay? So just keep that in mind. You have to use them responsibly. You have to realize, um, the premise of it and yes some the credit card marketing is phenomenal because they have their marketing on lock because they go to college campuses and stuff like that the way they entice people to get a credit card um yes their marketing is genius because it makes people fall for it and believe that they need it can you use credit cards effectively yes you can um but yes you have to have a good financial foundation so that you don't get into credit card debt get into credit card trouble and you also have to know yourself as well to know what um you're capable of handling like if you already know you are a spender and you like to spend stuff and you like to try and keep up with the latest trends and stuff credit cards for you may not be you know the, it's probably not the best way to utilize your money if you don't have a job you don't have a way to pay these credit cards back then no credit cards are not for you and i think um some people i i know even for myself growing up it's like I, I really did not understand how credit cards work so to speak um i had like a little bit of information but i remember being told like don't get a credit card and what did i do i went and got a, i'm like i'm getting a credit card because they said i could get one or whatever now i did do pretty good with using the credit card like it, it 
it definitely hit me like once I got the bill like oh shoot I gotta pay this or whatever so um but I you know if you don't understand how credit cards work then yes it, it can get you into a bad situation so I feel like we should not go and tell people that credit cards are bad we should definitely go into details about how they should be used how they should be used responsibly if you choose to use them just like with sex it's like if you're gonna have sex you need to make sure you do X Y and Z all that kind of stuff so same things with credit cards you can't just give a blanket statement saying credit cards are bad you need to break it down and explain to them why you're saying this what they should be doing if they then decide to go use a credit card all right and that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, myth number two that I was told and I believe for a very long time is that you can save your way to wealth. <sighs> hey, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Gold Digger Chick. I look forward to seeing you all over there. And as always, check out my Etsy shop. And coming soon, I am going to have some new merch for all of my fellow gold diggers. like I had pretty good um, financial knowledge or whatever because I'm like oh yeah as soon as I started making money I always save my money like I'm gonna save my money save my way to up so once again I was not told the whole thing I was not given the full picture you cannot save your way to wealth you can invest your way to wealth but saving like in a bank account where you get like 0.01 percent nah sis even the ones where you can get possibly two and three percent before this pandemic hit and with the online banking and things like that you because of inflation you can't save your way to wealth you can invest your way to wealth and saving money um is a good thing but don't necessarily think you are going to get rich or have a nice nest egg from saving just because of the fact of how inflation is and things like that so Yes, saving your money will not lead you to wealth, but investing your money will lead to lead to wealth. And I think saving the term saving has been conflated so much, um, even with investing. Like sometimes people are talking about investing and they're calling it savings or, or whatever. No, savings and investing are two different things. And then people will get confused and say, well, I've been saving money and they think they're going to be wealthy. And it's like, no, sis. This person, they use the term saving, but what they're really doing is they are investing their money. Um, and it's two different things, okay? So saving your way to, you cannot save your way to wealth. You can invest your way to wealth and you must know the difference or whatever. And for a long time, I did not know the difference. I probably was an adult before I even knew knew the difference or whatever because i'm like yeah i'm saving i'm saving and other people say yeah we're saving too and they're they're saving in the stock you know investing in the stock market and saving and making money and I, all i got is my money in this little rinky dink um savings account or even a cd because those were more popular when i was like in college and stuff like that and i'm thinking and i'm thinking i'm really doing something and it's not to say you're not doing something but you could do more and if i knew more i probably could have done more but i didn't know you just don't know what you don't know all right now moving along oh before i move along too because i just remembered too the most important investment you will make is in yourself so also make sure that you invest in yourself and what i mean by that is like even investing um in your education and not necessarily about going to college because y'all know my sentiments about college or whatever um if you don't please check out my other videos so but invest in yourself so that you can educate yourself um, in different in a variety of different ways so that you are constantly and continuously learning and growing all right so myth number three is that I will always have debt or that everybody has debt now I know for me personally I am not claiming that okay I do not have that mindset yes I have debt right now but I will not always have debt and everybody maybe at one point in time will have debt but I will not stay in debt and it's just amazing to me the mindset that people have to to think that oh yeah debt is just a natural part of life nah it's not a natural part of my life i'm not trying to it's not supposed to be here okay so 
I will always have that. You need to bust that money myth um, if you believe that and shift your mindset. And there's a saying that says that something to the effect like it's easy to wander into debt, but you definitely have to be focused and determined in order to get yourself out of debt. Kind of like it's easy to get in trouble, but it's a lot harder to get yourself out of trouble. So yes, it might be easy to get into debt, but that doesn't mean you have to stay there. You can still get out of debt. You just have to have the focus. You just have to have the determination and you can get out of debt. I'm not always going to be here and neither will you. Okay. If you have the right mindset. And it's also mind blowing to me, like how people can easily believe that, that kind of mindset, like I will always have that or everybody has that or, you know, I'm always going to be indebted to someone, but it's so hard for people to believe like, well, I'm going to be wealthy. You know, my income is limitless. Like it's so hard for people to believe that, but they'll easily believe that they'll always be in debt. And it's all about a mindset shift. So shift your mindset to that of wealth and abundance and it will come to you. Okay. All right. Now. The fourth money myth that we are going to talk about is that your job will provide for your retirement plan or that Social Security is going to take care of you when you get old. Whew, I believe that money mindset for a long time, up until recently or whatever, because I'm self-employed. I have my own business. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this investing and stuff like that because I don't have a job where I get a 401k, you know, pensions. Like if you get a, if you still get a pension plan, you want to, you, you like a unicorn. Okay. You are rare and few and far between. Okay. Because pension plans have gone away. They have been replaced more so with 401ks. But if you are not working in a company that offers you a 401k or you're not have a job position that allows for a 401k, you may be thinking like, well, how am I able to save for retirement? But there are ways. So um, do your due diligence, educate yourself. And especially if you're self-employed, um, there is a self-employment pension, a, a SC a SEP, SCP um, that you can um, create for yourself. You can also do Roth IRAs and things like that. And if you have kids and they are working, they can even make um, a, a, a IRA for themselves as well. Also, if you have a home-based business, your kids can work for you. And guess what? They don't have to pay any taxes. Um, I highly suggest you check out a video by um, Lynn Richardson, who talks about having a home-based business. I will make sure I will try to link that video up above and how um, your kids can generate money from that and they don't have to pay any taxes. And guess what? If they're earning income, you can create them an IRA. Now, if your kids are not creating any kind of income, there are still ways that you can um, set up accounts for them to contribute to them for when they become adults so that they might have a little bit of um I won't say save, I guess savings or a little bit of money to start off with and everything. All right. So I'm debunking the myth that only your job will be able to provide you with your retirement plan. No, you can create your own retirement plan. But like I said, I am not the expert on that, but there are ways and I have found ways where you can create your own um, plans for when you do want to retire. Okay. All right, next thing we are going to talk about is money myth number five is that you can't make money doing what you love. All right, so you can make money doing what you love. Oftentimes, people get into different careers, get into different professions because they want to make money and probably what they love to do, they realize that it's not going to be supportive of their lifestyle, but you can still do what you love. Um, I think it all goes back to the mindset with that as well. You have to break down those stereotypes, break down those limiting beliefs and kind of like redefine what you feel that career would be that you actually would love or whatever. Um, like I said, I work with kids um, in my office on a daily basis and I'll get, I will get, um, I will ask some of my older kids what they want to do if it's close to them graduating and stuff like that. And I'll get all kinds of different responses. Sometimes the response is like, oh, I like working with kids, so I want to be a teacher. Or I like helping people, so I want to be a nurse. So it's like sometimes we immediately think, okay, you like kids? Be a teacher. Oh, you want to help people? Be a nurse. It's like you can still do things that you love. But in a different context, you gotta gotta just break down some of those stereotypes and like redefine like if I like kids or if I like helping people or if I like drawing or if I like art or if I like cooking, if I like photography, how can I turn that into a career? It's just like it's so natural, like, oh, you like cooking, you're gonna be a chef. And it's like, mm, 
what else could you do how can you be creative like look at the people who've created these um like hello fresh and stuff like that and personal chefs and and things like that like those are some of the outside of the box of you saying oh well, i'm not i'm gonna be a cook at a restaurant i'm gonna work at a restaurant or whatever or something like that you can have your own restaurant you can have your own food truck it's like it's just and that's just one example but i'm just saying there's a variety of different ways for you to do the things that you love and you just have to figure out um how to do that okay all right last and final money myth is that you have to wait to 65 in order to retire like who told us that where did they get that from like who told us that we supposed to be working until 65 like where where do you do that at because i'm not trying to do that i'm not i'm not trying to work until I'm 65. I'm sorry. I I just am not. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. Y'all already know. I I'm not really trying to work at the 45. Like I told y'all, if I if y'all see me working, it's because I want to work. But who like who told us we had to work until we 65? And if you do a history on it, I think um if I'm remembering correctly, there were actuaries that like the people who like set like insurance plans and stuff like that. And the average age that people would live was around back and so this was set a long time ago, whatever, like 30, 40, maybe 50, 60 years ago, or whatever. I don't know exactly. But they were like, oh, the average age of a American is 65. So we're gonna reset the or 70 or whatever it is. Well, so we're gonna set the retirement age to 65. Basically, at that time, if you think about it, they wanted you to work to just before you were about to die who's doing that like thankfully we're living longer so that's why people are um getting to retirement age and now they're being able to tap into retirement but it was designed for us to work almost to this point until it was time for us to die like who wants to do that like not me i'm not signing up for that okay so just think about and that and that just goes to show like how things are created and we just take it and we run with it and it's like where the heck did this even come from or whatever and then if you trace it back you're like oh well that don't make sense anymore now like that doesn't fit that doesn't fit the narrative for today okay so i am not trying to work that long um yeah some people back in the day decided that or whatever but yes i'm not doing that and i am actually interested in joining the fire movement and trying to get myself set up to be able to achieve fire and fire just means financial independence retire early and like i said if you see me working it's because i want to work and not because i have to work okay so those are some of the money myths um that i am debunking real quick i am going to recap myth number one was that credit cards are bad myth number two was that you could save your way to wealth Myth number three is that you will always have debt. Number four was your job will provide you with your retirement plan. Number five was that you can't make money. You cannot make money doing what you love. And myth number six was that you have to wait until age 65 unto, until to retire, okay? Those were the six money myths. All right, so let me know in the comment section, what money myth did you grow up believing? And then as you got older, you was like, that's some BS, like that was, that that don't even make any sense okay and um also let me know which one of these money myths can you relate to okay um that is all i have for now this is your girl rita also known as the gold digger make sure you follow me on ig at gold digger chick all right take care guys